How much of your time do you spend worrying? Maybe you're worried about finances or about your family's safety or about some medical situation or about the future. A man named Paul shares the gospel in Nigeria. Many times there, he's faced hostility and danger. His perspective can help all of us to stop worrying and trust God for everything. God is the one that protect us, is the one that take care of us, is the one that is our provider, is our father. And through this suffering, God show up very strongly and love for, the, for his people. Jesus never promised his followers an easy path. In fact, he told his disciples that the world would hate them. He sent them out as sheep among wolves. Jesus' words came true in the life of the apostles, and they're still coming true today in the lives of his followers around the world. Join host Todd Nettleton as we hear their inspiring stories and learn how we can help, right now on The Voice of the Martyrs Radio Network. Welcome back to The Voice of the Martyrs Radio. My name is Todd Nettleton. I'm in our studios in Bartlesville, Oklahoma. Last week, we heard from two guests who told us about exciting things God is doing, calling people to himself in nations around the world. Let's review some of what we heard last week from Paul and Paul here on Voice of the Martyrs Radio. It's incredible what we see God doing around the world. And just in the context of our mission, but also we work with partnerships really across the body of Christ, it's phenomenal to see the catalytic expansion of, of Christ's kingdom in the world today. And one of the things I know you're seeing, even in Nigeria especially maybe, is people who were enemies of the gospel, even persecutors, even murderers of Christians, who are being reached by the gospel. Uh, I can see um, like one of them that uh, we see in the northern part of Nigeria, that we see many of them coming to the Lord Jesus. They used to persecute Christians before. They used to kill Christians, destroy churches. And it's amazing to see them coming to give their life to Jesus and wanting to be missionaries. I can say he's the modern Apostle Paul. Paul and Paul from YWAM are back with us for part two of our conversation. Paul Childers is the leader of University of the Nations for YWAM in Kona, Hawaii. YWAM, by the way, if you don't know, stands for Youth with a Mission. And we're also going to hear from a second Paul. For his security, we're just calling him Paul. We're not sharing his last name. He's the director of YWAM's work inside Nigeria. I asked each of them how they prepare gospel workers to face hostile situations. How do you guide someone through the process of saying, yes, God has called me into this dangerous situation, and I'm ready to answer that call even if I don't come back? I think it's really falling in love with Jesus and really having that singular focus that it's really all about him. And not the fact that I worship him or I give of my money or tithes that makes him great, but he in and of himself, he is worthy of this. So if we understand surrender to him, yeah. we understand who he is, and if he is Lord of our lives, then it's simply a matter of hearing his voice yeah. and obeying him. It's not about being radical. It's not about trying to be like a commando for Jesus. It's just hearing his voice, and whatever he says, he will enable to happen. Like Paul's story just now. Yeah, absolutely. What about you? What would you add? Uh, I will say uh, what Paul just shared is wonderful. It's fantastic. And is people also willing to lay down their lives and say, God, I surrender all to you. And willing to serve God where he put us. And and also bringing, having this passion to see people understand the light, knowing Jesus and knowing that he's our savior. And one thing that really uh, key also is to be able to touch those who da cannot read the Bible, but they can listen in audio, uh, mm -hmm. in audio form and just receive Jesus and receive the light. And this is the passion that we're seeing young people more and more 
ready to go and lay down their life that Oda will also discover the truth. Do you ever have fear when you're going into some of these places and when you're meeting some of these people? Do you feel fearful or has God just removed that fear from you? The, the fear is there, but what motivating you is not fear, but the passion to see people come to know Jesus. I can say um, I have fear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But my wife, my wife, she hardly has any. Um, she went with Paul into a lot of these places, and she would call. She actually just had a miscarriage, so she was not in a very robust sort of uh, place in herself. But she goes and she calls me. I had like 30 seconds, and all I could hear where I was in Hawaii was, I am made for this. And she's in the middle of a war zone with Christians being slaughtered and just terrible, terrible situation. Mm -hmm. Uh, she's a photographer and and connecting with the people. So she is a very courageous person. I feel more fair. So do you think that's a, a function of personality, maybe more than? Maybe, I, you know, as well. Maybe I think more, you know, maybe my, my mind is kind of working all the probabilities and possibilities of what could happen. Uh, or maybe I'm just more of a fearful person. But the thing that enables me to overcome is the vision of who Christ is. Amen. And he is worthy of my life anyway. Honestly, right. I got to the point up in this part of the world where and no longer mattered. Uh -huh. My life was for him. I'm it's not I'm not trying to have bravado like no. I'm super this or right. super that. But, but he but, owns it and and he can yeah. do whatever he wants with it. He can. I mean, that's the, I belong to him. Yeah. I'm loyal to him first and foremost. And if it's my time, then it's my time and I'm okay. Just as long as no one makes a YouTube and puts it up on the internet for my kids. <laughs> that would be the, that was the thing yes. I was always thinking that would be bad. I've worried about that myself. So, Paul, one of the things that you're doing in Nigeria is you're helping the widows of Christians who have been killed. Uh, talk a little bit about that ministry and how, how God led you into specifically reaching out to widows. As we started in Port Harcourt, God led us to start reaching out to the northern part of Nigeria and start reaching out to the persecuted church. I remember uh, one time 300 Muslims gave their life to Jesus and every uh, the church members at that time, people was afraid to, to take them into the church because they was thinking if we take them and they turn up that right. they just want... What if want, it's a trick? What if they're just... Yeah. Exactly. And um, then one organization called us and said, hey, they have these 300 Muslims. Are you guys willing to disciple them? And we pray about it, and we feel God wants us to go there and disciple them. We take a team of 30 Wawamas, and we went to that place in the northern part of Nigeria, and we start discipling them. And after we disciple them, they just realized that there was really serious commitment uh -huh. and we was able to reintegrate them into the churches and this was really a wonderful experience but at the same time we start seeing the destruction of churches i remember more than 1850 churches in Borno state alone was destroyed wow and uh, if you think of these numbers of churches that have been destroyed you can think of how many people die in the process and, and news are not talking about it. News are not talking about the disaster that is happening in different places where it looks like there is a cleansing, destroying churches and killing Christians. And we start praying about it. And as we went to those places, we start our base in, uh, in, uh, in Bono State, especially in, uh, in the city of Midiguri. And when we start our base there, and we was having discipleship training courses, is when Boko Haram started and start killing, destroying churches. And they called me at that time because there was a DTS going on, and there was DTS is discipleship, discipleship training, training school, training schools, yep. mission training school, and they called me and say, "Oh, the busy killing and destroying churches coming." And we would, there are no way we can escape from this because we are surrounded. 
And we start that night we didn't sleep. We pray and pray for protections and pray that God will intervene. And praise God, the military intervened 300 meters from our center. Wow. So 300, basically 300 yards from where your guys were, Yes, they turned Boko Haram around. Yes, the military started pushing them. And it was like that we was able to evacuate our staff and our student. And then we see all the churches that have been destroyed. But one thing that touched me was instead of running, those Christians took the blocks of the bricks of the destroyed churches, like a, a, a chairs, and they were sitting under the sun and continued to worship Jesus and having the church service. And this challenged us, and we say, we want to stand with you. And it's how we start to rebuild those churches and stand with them. As we start to rebuild those churches and stand with them, there was one young man all the time coming to watch the Christian from far. And he was having a lot of questions in his mind. Why these people are not giving up? Why <laughs> these people are not bitter? They should be bitter because yes. they see their, their church brothers, is destroyed, but uh, they won't leave. They, they just start gathering in the shell of the building and just keep exactly, on worshiping. Exactly. And this touched him. And he will come, he will stand very far watching them. And they will have a time as a church to pray for the persecuted church, but also to pray for the Muslim that was killing them at that time and to pray for Boko Haram. And this touched him. So think, I, I just want our listeners to, to get that picture very clearly in your mind. Their church has been destroyed. Yes. They are gathered inside the shell of the church. Yes. Praying for the people who destroyed it. Yes. And, 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 and you know, there was no roof. It was under the sun because the church is completely destroyed. Uh -huh. And then these men went closer to the church because God used this to touch his heart. The love that the Christians still have for their enemies. And then he gave his life to Jesus. And then came and do missionary training. Wow. And today he is a missionary. It's like the story of <laughs> Apostle Paul. <laughs> Amen. One of the things that you are doing as you minister to the widows yes. is you're putting a ring on their finger. Why? Talk a little bit about that ceremony and why that's so important. One time we got a, around 2,000 widows, and God lay in our heart to, to stand with them in their suffering. And as God lay in our heart to stand with them in their suffering, God put in our heart to just wash their feet because the roads have been very long mm -hmm. and very dirty, very humiliating because some of them have been raped. And we will wash their feet and anoint it with oil and pray for healing to take place. As we was ministering to them, God was just touching their heart and say, thank you for standing with us. We are not alone. We are brothers and sisters that are standing in us, with us in our pain and our suffering. And God lay in our heart to put rings in their hands. As we was ministering to them and putting rings in their hands, we were saying, your husband is no more, but Jesus is your husband. Jesus understands your suffering. Jesus is with you. And this was such a great thing to see healing taking place in their heart. How, how did they respond to that? To just the, not only the physical ring, but just the understanding that Jesus is going to look after us. Jesus is taking the place of my husband who was killed. Yeah. It, it really, one thing that they understand was very comforting. And they was understanding they are not alone, that God is with them. And you know, when you have God, you have everything. Amen. It's more than riches. It's more than gold and silver. When you have God, you know that he's the one that protects. He's the one that provides. He's the one that leads. 
And this is amazing for them to come to a place of understanding that God did not abandon them. Because you know, when you are going through suffering, the question is, is it God still with me? And the enemy sometimes can use it mm -hmm. to bring discouragement, to bring us down and say, yeah, God abandoned me. It's why I'm going through all this. God abandoned me. It's why my, my husband died. And false accusation can start coming and, and start coming. Maybe it's my fault that it, this happened. And, you know, the enemy loves to play that game with people that are going through suffering. And, uh, but when you understand, come to a place of understanding that is not because of any things that you did that this thing happened. You've been faithful serving God. You've been faithful following God. It's because God is God and God understands your suffering. And God is the one that's standing with you in this time of suffering. When you understand that, it brings more strength back, love, and continue to serve God. God is the one that protects us, is the one that takes care of us, is the one that is our provider, is our father. And through this suffering, God show up very strongly and love for, the, for his people. Amen. We're talking today on Voices of Martyrs Radio with Paul Childers. He's the campus director at the University of the Nations in Kona, Hawaii, part of YWAM's ministry there. We're also talking with another Paul, uh, the leader of YWAM's work in Nigeria. We've been hearing about uh, the work with widows, the work encouraging and, and building them up and providing and helping for them. Paul Childers first, uh, as we finish up, we like to equip our listeners to pray. As we think about YWAM, as we think about your work in Kona, but the work of YWAM around the world, what are some very specific ways we can pray in 2020 for YWAM? The first thing would be the deepening of relationships and partnerships, and really that we continue on that track, but that we bond heart to heart. A second thing would be the effectiveness to preach the gospel that there would be many open doors, that we would not be conditioned by what we've done in the past, by where we've gone in the past, by the past uh, openness of places, but that he would always show us how to go to the unreached. How can we reach those people? Because normally it's very expensive to go to those places. It's completely inconvenient and it's difficult, but that we would see those opportunities, not see them as challenges, but as opportunities. I think number three, really around Bible translation, distribution, and engagement. So right now, um, the Bible is translated uh, into many languages of the world, but there are 1,600 that still have not one verse of Scripture. And so we want to really see that accomplished. And really asking for prayer that we would be able to do our part and that the global body of Christ would be able to find ways to get this done quickly so that we can get the good news out. You know, when 20 uh, languages were translated in Europe, it changed Europe. The Reformation came. Mm -hmm. Just imagine if over 7,000 languages in the whole world has the Bible, what would happen? So for us, 2020 is a global year of the Bible. We're participating in that. It's something that we're not defining, but we're a part of, and that we really see that that go really big and broad. So those would be three areas that I would say. I'm reminded of the verse in Revelation about every tribe and tongue and nation. Amen. Uh, we, we need That's to get right. translating so Hallelujah. that we can uh, see that fulfilled. Paul, what about specifically the country of Nigeria, but also your specific work? How, how do we pray for the nation of Nigeria right now? Uh, today, uh, like we see 227 languages that doesn't have Bible in their mother tongue, is really a challenge. And I will want to call all of you to pray and stand with us that we will be able to see all the 227 languages have their Bible in their mother tongue. Because like we know, the, when the Bible speaks your mother tongue, is 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 the language of your heart. And we want to see those people that even doesn't know how to read and write also be able to listen to the gospel 
uh, and their mother tongue. And this is one of the things that God lay strongly in our heart. And we're starting already in, um, in July, the coming year, to start putting the, the Bible in audio forms for those people. To wow, get, to that's get a to, great project. Yes, pray for this project and the people that will be engaged in this project. And we're planning to use some of those widows to get involved into oral translations of the Bible. And we be, they, they are busy going through DTS, Discipleship Training School, right now. Pray for the widows that are going through Discipleship Training School. And they will be engaged also to know that, yeah, they have a part to contribute and seeing the Word of God being translated. And, uh, and also, we, we, not only the widow, but engaging everyone, uh, like uh, those who are going through Bible, uh, our School of Biblical Studies, they will get involved and helping as different company like Seed Company uh, and um, Wycliffe coming to help us set up. Uh, this will this is wonderful. Pray for this partnership, like Paul was sharing, that this will go. They already committed to come to Nigeria to be with us to start training us in the oral translations and start training our people as they finish their DTS, as they finish their school of biblical study, to go into oral translation to see all these languages and and 227 languages in Nigeria have the Bible in their mother tongue. This is exciting. Very exciting. It's a great thing to pray for. It will be a great accomplishment uh, when that happens. Paul, if, if people want to connect with YWAM, how, what's the best way to connect with uh, the work in Kona and the work that you're doing? Yeah, they could go to ywamkona.org. You can also find us on uh, Facebook and Instagram. So ywamkona.org, or just search for YWAM Kona. Awesome. We'll give you a link if you come to vomradio.net as well to uh, go directly there. Paul and Paul, thank you so much for sharing your story, sharing your heart. I pray that God uses this to raise up people to pray, especially for Nigeria, especially for the work that you're doing. Thank you for being our guest on Voice of the Martyrs Radio. Thank you so thank much. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure to be here. Our guest, Paul Childers, is the leader of YWAM's University of the Nations in Kona, Hawaii, and for our second guest, for his safety, we're just referred to him as Paul. We haven't used his last name. He's the director of YWAM in Nigeria. I pray that this week you'll follow up with the prayer request that you've heard from Paul and Paul. As they've shared, the gospel is going forth, even in the midst of persecution. Even the hardest of hearts is not too hard for God to reach in and plant the seeds of his love. So pray for the nation of Nigeria this week. Pray for the Christians there. Pray also for the persecutors there. Pray for those who are opposed to the gospel, that God will reach in and plant that seed in their hearts. You know, every week we try to equip you here on VOM Radio to pray for persecuted Christians, to pray for God's work in restricted nations. There's another tool I want to put in your hands that will also help you pray. It is the brand new 2020 Global Prayer Guide from the Voice of the Martyrs. It is 96 pages, it is full color, and it is free. I will send you a copy for free. We want people to have this tool to help them pray effectively. It will take you to the countries around the world and give you information like, hey, who are the persecutors? What motivates them? What does persecution look like? What is it like to follow Christ in that country? How hard is it to get a Bible? How is the church being persecuted? And how can I pray for Christians in that nation? Again, brand new 2020 Global Prayer Guide from the Voice of the Martyrs. I will send you a copy for free. Come to vomradio.net, request your copy of the brand new Global Prayer Guide. We equip you to pray every week on VOM Radio. The Global Prayer Guide is another way that Voice of the Martyrs will equip you to pray for our brothers and sisters in hostile and restricted nations. One of the countries that is covered in the Global Prayer Guide is Algeria. It is predominantly a Muslim country, and yet the Church of Jesus Christ is growing rapidly. We're going to hear more about how God and God's people 
are at work in the nation of Algeria. That's next week right here on the Voice of the Martyrs Radio Network.